And good morning. Yes, it's the 27th of September already. Elenin's been aligning with Sun and Earth over the past day, and I guess continuing today. I didn't get through all of my emails yet. <laughs> I went through a few of them, but I got 100 emails in this morning or overnight. And just the one in one inbox, and I didn't get to look at them all. Anyway, I'm not going to talk about that today. I'm just mentioning it in the introduction here. What I am going to talk about is ninth wave politics, religion, and open discussion. I almost became a Presbyterian yesterday, as my Facebook friends can attest. Jim Rigby is pastor of St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Austin, Texas and a long-time activist in movements concerned with gender, racial, and economic justice. I've only heard two of his sermons, and I really like the guy. He's not afraid to bring controversial subjects out in the open. If there is any role needed in our spiritual communities, that's it, at least in my less-than-humble opinion. <laughs> Oh, yes, I can't help but reflect on the events that happened on 9-11 in a new way and some of the opinions that have been bantered about since then, where there was an obvious difference of opinion between two leaders in the community. Reverend Sue and myself. And the way the board, and I was on the board, chose to handle it is not by direct communication, but by covert action of censoring the dissent. And a lot of that has to do with fear over a 501c3 status. And any time fear takes control of a dialogue, there is no dialogue. There's only action of one side against the other, one side censoring and shutting the other one up. And obviously, I felt strongly enough about it to withdraw from the community that I loved with all of my heart, and still do. I mean, these are amazing people that I have grown to love tremendously. They are family to me. The new way from the time that I first went there and, and remembered, as I recall, back in June of 2006, and I heard them sing their Lord's Prayer which honored all world religions, I thought, this is home. It's an inclusive community. And I like that. In fact, I love that. And then as I heard Jim Rigby talk to his church, he started out with gays and lesbians and the fact that the Presbyterian Church in America just approved non-discrimination against people because of their sexual preferences. I mean, I liked that. I know there are conservatives that may not like that, but I like that. And I like the fact that he acknowledged the need for the discussion within his church community. And I don't care if it's a temple community, a, a mosque community, a, whatever the spiritual community label might be, if there was ever a time in the history of the human family, when there needs to be open and honest discussion, when we need to be willing to air our dirty laundry and allow unlimited free speech, not limited by 501c3s or government regulations that abridge our constitutional and natural rights. No. Honest, honest, honest and open discussion. All viewpoints can be heard and expressed. All viewpoints. Now, will that break down into 
splits. It always has. Are we going to be able to rise above it and speak with compassion to each other and recognize that everybody has a valid viewpoint? Let's hear them. Let's compare them. Let's talk about them. Let's bring them into the open. Our world, folks, is changing. And if you haven't noticed, the government is not the place to get answers. They are liars. Pathological liars. And so is the mainstream media that is controlled by the international bankers and controlled by the Vatican and the City of London and Washington, D.C. These are pathological liars. And they have no power except our consent. And when a church says 501c3s are more important than truth, that church has just dealt, has just fallen down in its most important duty is to set people free and to empower people. And you don't do that by censoring them. Yes, I am passionate about this, in case you haven't noticed. Passion translates into anger as some people see it. And sometimes we have to be angry. The Bible says, Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. That's a quote from the Bible that I memorized a long time ago. No, I don't know where it's found, and I don't care where it's found. It's truth. We are allowed to express our emotions. We are allowed to express our feelings. We are allowed to express our opinions. We are allowed to separate between what we feel, what we think, and what we think we see. We are allowed to be honest and to be in integrity, each of us, to our own truth. And know that our own truth is not the supreme truth. That's ego. Whenever we think that we have the truth and we have to shut people up that have a different opinion, that's the ego that would do that. That's fear that does that. That's not a loving, compassionate heart that steps into that ball game and plays on the, with those rules. Well, I will just shut my opposers up. I will stifle the opinion. Why do you think they put the 501c3 in there and put rules about political discussion? Why? Because they have something to hide. That's the only reason anybody would do that. And then we say, these are the rules that we have to abide by. And so they make us enforce the rules on each other by telling other people, well, your opinion doesn't matter. We're going to shut you up. We're going to shut you up. And that's what they did to me at the New Way. I'm going to see Sue later on today. I'm turning over the reins of the newsletter to someone else. I don't even know the other person. It's not someone that's been part of our community, at least not actively so. But in any case, I'm going to be seeing Sue first face to face for the first time. And I love Sue. Sue is a woman of tremendous courage. She has balls on many areas. But she fell down when she stood up for the 501c3 and shut me up. She cut off the most faithful and loyal person, individual, in the New Way community here in Florida. She censored me. That's not acceptable. That will never be acceptable to me again. I will not be silenced. They'll have to cut my tongue out or kill me. But I will not be silenced, folks. These things are important things to bring into the open and to discuss and to know. You need to know that politics is an important part of your spiritual growth. We're not going to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth by remaining silent. And by using whatever people say against them. What we have to share is opinion. Someone asked me yesterday, what's your weakness, Ron? <laughs> and I answered back, you think I only have one? <laughs> I have every weakness known to man. 
I haven't arrived. I don't know all the answers, but I'm fearless in being willing to tell my truth. I'm fearless in being willing to allow others to contradict my truth. I'm fearless and a strong defender of allowing everyone to have free expression and to express their opinion. And I believe that differences of opinion brought into the open are the way that we're going to heal each other. We're going to be able to see where the other person's coming from and maybe listen for the first time. Not just hear a different, a different opinion, but listen with our heart and say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. They do have valid points. I use the word that Jim Rigby had balls and he wasn't like a lot of people that occupy pulpits that are, that I called pussies. And I got challenged for that using the term balls and pussies. And someone said that pussies are a lot stronger than balls because they can handle childbirth and you kick someone in the balls and they double over in pain and you've incapacitated them for a while. And that's a valid point. I like it. See, but I made my point. I used the traditional viewpoint that balls is, signifies strength and courage. And pussy signifies weakness. No, I've long been a defender of women's rights. I've long been a defender since the, my days in, of writing paradox in sexual preferences and the right for people to choose who they love and how they love. I've long been a defender of a woman's right to choose and I'm not pro-abortion. I've never been and will never be pro-abortion. That's a life. That's a life. But at least in the early days, and I used to say first trimester, I mean it needs to happen. I believe in the in the R what is it, the birth, the morning after pill, where you don't even know if you got pregnant or not. That's when it needs to be stopped. But anyway, that's not what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about open discussion. I'm talking about the two most important factors in our lives religion and politics and when I use religion now I'm, I'm using religion to include spirituality we need to bring these issues into the open the things that have divided us for a long long time we need to talk about them honestly and openly in our communities it's more important for me in a spiritual community to allow open discussion than it is to have sermons sermons may trigger the discussion but we need to not stifle the discussion. The discussion is an essential part, an essential part of our growth. It's an essential part of our liberty and our freedom. Freedom of speech is something that never, never is to be relinquished to any authority or by any authority other than yourself. Only you can be your authority and limit your freedom of speech. And the only reason you would limit it is because you're afraid. It's time to overcome the fear and face the fear and step into the truth. Truth includes many opinions because they're the opinion that is the present point of view. And present point of views need to be discussed honestly, openly, with vulnerability, the dialogue needs to be, it needs to happen. It needs to happen around this world. We need to talk about the things that have hurt us and the things that have helped us and the things that piss us off and the things that inspire us. We need to bring all of this out into the open, into dialogue, into the community where we can grow together, where we can learn what it means to love one another as I have loved you. Do you hear me? Can you hear what I'm saying? Folks, this is important stuff. This is important stuff. Let's love one another, please.
And by loving, I mean listening. Let's listen and actually hear where we're coming from with the ears of our heart and see with the eyes of our heart and be compassionate one to the other. Namaste.